Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. Yes, he's back. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? Brian, how can you not be good when you're at Horse Center? That's right. What's more fun than Horse Center? Either doing the show or watching the show. I hope people have as much fun watching the show, Matt, as we do putting it together every week. This week, we have a big Saturday at Aqueduct. The big A, as I call it, Matt. You're out that way. So uh, let's get started. Hey, before we talk our two feature races, which are, of course, the grade one Cigar Mile and the Remsen Stakes for uh, Kentucky Derby Wannabes, Matt, let's mention Julia Shining because she's also part of this card. A lot of people are talking about Julia Shining. That's a full sister to Malathot. She'll be running in the Demoiselle. I expect her to be favored off of only one race. And Matt, you'll remember that one race is where she uh, fell way behind early at Keeneland in her debut, and she came flying. So something to look forward to on the undercard. But let's jump right over to the Cigar Mile, the headliner of the day, Matt. And uh, unfortunately, you see there on our, uh, uh, on our early odds for the Cigar Mile, $750,000 grade one, Obesis is not allowed to enter the cigar mile with the uh the outbreak of her, uh, uh at uh, churchill downs uh one horse from the sappy joseph barn got sick so they're not allowing horses from churchill downs to come to aqueduct and other tracks as well so noah Bessis, he is a scratch so we're left not with a field of six let's start from the uh from the rail out double crown he comes from the barn of norm cash owner trainer norm cash and he pulled off a big upset last time. Yeah, he he sure did in the uh, in the final prep race at Aqueduct for the Cigar Mile, the Kelso Handy Kelso, which is also run in in the one tur turn mile. Uh, double stalking uh, came up with a big win uh, to to prep for the Cigar Mile. Norm Cash has got a really growing barn. And uh, based down in the mid-Atlantic and shipping all around, uh, you'll see his horses at Charlestown and where he got his start as a trainer uh, uh, in uh, his family uh, being involved in racing down there. And now, you know, New York, Charlestown, Laurel, uh, you'll see horses from Cash. Yeah, an interesting horseman. If you don't know much about Norm Cash, I think we're going to learn more about him. In the upcoming months and years, uh, Norm Cash actually has two horses that he owns and trains here in the Cigar Mile. Double Crown ran down Baby Yoda. It was a good performance in the Grade Two Kelso, which is the same track and trip as the Cigar Mile. So throwing Double Crown completely out of the mix again, even though he's not one of the favorites again, might be a mistake. This is a horse with some stakes experience. Uh, it looks like a mile suits him well. And again, with that nice win over the track, certainly a horse to consider, at least here in the Scar Mile. Number two is the horse we expect to be favored, Matt. Zandon. Zandon, uh, you know, he was my Kentucky Derby pick, Matt. I, I, I'm, I'm not afraid to admit that I was wrong, wrong in the Kentucky Derby once again. Wow. Zandon didn't run a bad race, but since winning that bluegrass in style, the grade one bluegrass back in April, the son of Upstart just hasn't been able to hit the winner circle in four subsequent starts. Although, on the other hand, he hasn't run badly in any of those four, Matt, including the third place finish in that Kentucky Derby. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And before I start up uh, talking about Zandon, I just want you mentioned Baby Yoda uh, uh, from the Kelso. Uh, he was not able to enter the Cigar Mile plan to, but apparently, apparently spiked a pretty high fever. Uh, couple days ago right before entry so we don't get to see him in there uh, a little bit of a fan favorite that horse i think mostly because of the name but uh, missed sorry to interrupt you matt missed he is baby yoda yes yes brian um uh you, so we get to zandon and zandon is of course a three-year-old as brian was mentioning with the derby and his derby pick not such a bad Derby pick Brian. The horse ran pretty well uh, in the in the race, but the Cigar Mile, you know, has 
very often been a battle between three three year olds at the very end of their three year old season against older horses. As a matter of fact, in the history of the the uh, Naira Mile turned Cigar Mile, twelve three year olds have won the race, including the inaugural with Forty Niner and last year with American Revolution. So I think we are here in the. Uh, this year's Sargar Mile with a little bit of a battle between the the three-year-olds and the older horses. And yeah, uh, Zandon always runs well, but I guess at this point, uh, as you mentioned, he has not found the winner's circle since the bluegrass, but he's been running against the best three-year-olds in the country and now makes his first start against older. Yeah, it will be his first start against Holder after Kentucky Derby, Jim Dandy, Travers, Pennsylvania Derby, running well against all. Listen, I think he's the class of the field. There might be another horse in here who has even a longer list of accomplishments than Zandon, but I think Zandon is the class of the field if you just look at who he's been running against basically since his debut performance, which was his last one-turn race, Matt. He hasn't been running one turn for a long time, so his only one-turn race came in his debut and that was about 14 months ago uh i'd like to see zandon win this i think zandon could be a horse of the year next year i think he's capable but he has to break through he has to win and uh i'm not sure this race sets up wonderfully for him it's a short field six horses and there's not a heck of a lot of a uh, heck of a lot of speed in here matt you, we can take the number five out obesis is scratched so you'll see that uh, Zandon, as well as the other horse we've already talked about, Double Crown, are the two that are expected to be near the back of the pack. And frankly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Zandon sixth out of all of them early. And again, a race without a lot of speed. Yeah, it is a race with a lot of uh, without a lot of speed, particularly you know when you see in the projector there that uh, mind control is projected to be out on the lead. Um, and we'll talk more about mind control uh, uh, as we go along. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go back to that list, Matt. We're working our way down. White Abario, an interesting horse. Uh, two graded stakes wins early this year at Florida. He looked like one of the better three-year-olds in the country when he was winning races like the Holy Bull and, of course, the grade one Florida Derby. But much like Zandon, he's been 0 for 4 since his last win. Uh, unlike Sandin, though, he hasn't always been competitive, including that Kentucky Derby run he made. And most recently, Zandon was clearly better when Zandon finished second in the Pennsylvania Derby. White Barrio faded to fifth. Yeah, Brian, certainly uh, the, the comparison that they that neither Zandon nor White Barrio and, and here we're talking about both of the three year olds have not found the winner's circle in a while. Zandon, you know has looked good in all those races uh, without getting a win. Can't say so much uh, of that with White Abario outside of his second place uh, performance in the Ohio Derby. He didn't look good in the Haskell and he didn't look particularly well, particularly good in the Pennsylvania Derby either. And we are still left with the question for White Abario. Um, can he win outside of Gulfstream Park, which he has yet to do? Yeah, that's a good point, Matt. Uh, Aqueduct, a far different track than uh, Gulfstream Park. And Wade Barrio hasn't won a race outside of uh, Gulfstream Park. So we'll see. He does pick up Irad Ortiz Jr. And you see here on the U.S., uh, the time form U.S. pace projector, thanks to those guys for this cool little graphic here. This race favors horses on or near the early lead. It says it right there at the top of the chart, Matt, which means they are not expecting a fast pace, as as we agree. And White Barrio with Irad up should be at least forwardly placed as he was last time in the Pennsylvania Derby. Next on the list, Matt, another interesting horse. Get her number. Maybe another interesting horse with this similar problem to White Barrio. Get her number has been a California horse. All of his good races are in Southern California. He's coming off a very nice six furlong allowance win where he beat a uh, grade one type of horses in that allowance race. It was quite a six furlong allowance race out at Del Mar last time, and he beat uh, uh, very good horses there. 
uh, but get her number now has to come east and see if he can stretch his uh, run out to a mile at Aqueduct in the cigar mile. Yeah, I agree, Brian. You know, first start for Peter Miller, uh, sending this horse out to the east. Um, the races before that impressive Del Mar allowance, um, he was seventh in the paddle, Brian. But before that, he was second in the Bing Crosby. I guess there must be a, a plane or something that they're sharing coming out east because there is another California horse um, in the undercard in the Go for Juan stakes, which actually is a sideline, drew a big field of 11. So that's another interesting uh, race on this uh, card of graded stakes at uh at Aqueduct this Saturday. So um, get her number. Interesting horse, Peter Miller. Very good with sprinters. We'll see. Yeah, uh, off his recent form, I, I would think he has a shot here, especially if, uh, if, if the pace is uh, uh, not too fast as we expect, although he does like to come from off the pace. But he's sharp right now. And if he can come back and run back to some of those races at Del Mar, he's interesting. This is, remember, a one-turn mile at Aqueduct. Get her number. Obes is scratched. Number six is the other Norm Cash horse, Matt, outlier. I guess you could say his recent form is good with a bunch of second-place finishes. But, of course, he has not been running against the class of horse that he'll see here Saturday. No, he he certainly hasn't and looks to be the long shot in this field. Uh, I talked about Cash earlier and and – outlier has three seconds in a row at at three very different tracks at at charlestown at aqueduct at keeneland and uh he's been doing it with uh you know a pace pressing style which is probably good for this race but yeah a big big class jump for him yeah big class jump it'll be interesting we uh you know double crown was a big surprise in the kelso It'll be interesting to see if Norm Cash can uh, make more magic happen here with either Double Crown again or possibly Outlier, who looks to be maybe in career best form. Interestingly, this horse has had 40 races already, Matt. He's a four-year-old and he's had 40 races. So not everyone uh, is sitting in their barn only racing three or four times a year. Outlier certainly isn't good form, but uh, he's stepping up for his first stakes race ever, and it, it looks like a pretty tough spot for him. Let's talk about Mind Control, Matt, because Mind Control is a horse who's won 11 starts in his career. Uh, I believe he's had 28 starts. This should be his last race. That's what they're saying. This is his swan song, the six-year-old son of Stay Thirsty, Matt. He's won 11 to 28 lifetime. He's won nearly $1.8 million. He's won a a gaggle of stakes. He's won some grade one races. He's won four stakes races at Aqueduct. And Matt, best of all, I think he's best at the one mile distance. I think so, Brian, you know, and, and you mentioned all those wins, seven of his 11 wins are in graded stakes. So much to say about uh, mind control all the, all these years, the gritty mind control. We've seen him involved in several thrilling stretch duels um uh, around the, the the naira circuit and and usually when he gets in those stretch duels he prevails really gutsy horse um moved to the barn of todd pletcher towards the end of his career pletcher has won the uh cigar mile five times including with stay thirsty in 2012 and Stay Thirsty is the sire of Mind Control. So um, I think it would be cool if Mind Control goes out uh, with a victory in what is probably his final start. And hey, as the second choice, maybe five to two, three to one, that's attractive. Yeah, we, we haven't changed the uh, odds as that late news about Obesis came in. I expect Mind Control might be a little bit lower, and I certainly think Way to Barrio might be a little lower than you're seeing on our early odds board here. So look for that a little bit. Two things that struck me from what you said about uh, Mind Control, Matt. The first is I almost left the show early because you mentioned Stay Thirsty's win in the Cigar Mile, one of my least favorite results ever. <laughs> 
Groupie Daw was almost there, home free, beating the boys in the cigar mile. And of course, Stay Thirsty nailed one of my favorite Phillies of all time late. You, you, you cut me deep, Matt, with that mention. But yeah, Stay Thirsty was a nice horse who won the cigar mile. Mind control can do what his father did here. The other thing I wanted to mention from what you said is that when he is involved, when he is part of the pace, especially when they turn for home, he is just one tough son of a gun to run by. And with this lack of a lot of pace in here, it certainly seems like at his favorite distance at a track he clearly likes, he is going to be involved as they turn for home. And getting by mind control is no easy task. So uh, uh, certainly an interesting horse uh, below Zandon's favoritism in the Cigar Mile, Matt. All right, that's our uh, preview for the Cigar Mile. We're going to be talking top picks soon, but first we're going to go over the remps and we're going to do a full field analysis again, Matt, just like we did for the Cigar Mile with these two-year-olds. There's no graded stakes winners in this year's remps. And this is a race last year where we saw Zandon lose a heartbreaker to Mo Donegal. Mo Donegal, of course, won the grade one Belmont this year. Zandon won the uh, the grade one Bluegrass this year. That was a big addition of the Remsen. We don't know if anybody from this race is going to turn out to be like that. These horses are more up and comers. We're going to see where they fit soon. The Remsen stretching out to nine furlongs here on Saturday will tell us more Matt, uh, there, Antonio Sano has become an interesting trainer for me in the last several years. I guess they're hoping for a miracle. I'm going to butcher this Italian pronunciation. <laughs> Il Miracola. Il Miracola, hoping for a miracle. Actually, it wouldn't be a big miracle because we don't think he's going to be a long shot. He's a son of gun runner, a really well-bred son of gun runner who ran second in his first three races before a nice win last time at Gulfstream Park. Yep, absolutely, Brian. Three seconds to begin his career, and then a big win at Gulfstream out on the front end. Um, one by five and a half lengths, so that that suddenly made this Antonio Sano runner uh, a promising prospect, enough so that Sano's going to ship him up from, from Gulfstream. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, he was sprinting the first two times where he was second, all these races at Gulfstream Park. And I think he wants two turns. And and since he stretched out to a mile, you know, he ran second to a horse on high on. His name is Mr. Ripple. Uh, Mr. Ripple beat him pretty easy in that stretch out. But then Il, Il Miracola came back and, and looked really good breaking his maiden last time. As Matt said, on the lead, unlike the Cigar Mile, Matt, though, I, I see this as a race with a bunch of horses who want to be on or near, near the early lead, we're putting up the time force time form you as pace projector again. And I think we could look at at least five of these horses as horses that could be on or near the early lead. Yeah. And as the projector graphic is showing, uh, uh indicating that, 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 that is the case because the field, uh, and the chicklets are pretty closely packed together. I guess that means that we've got horses that want to be near the lead or or pressing, but no big speed balls amongst them. No big speed balls amongst them, but I think it should be an interesting pace, especially here when we're stretching out to a mile and eight. Number two is the horse I think will be back in the field, and and the pace project saw agrees with me. Uh, <laughs> Says Gigi Airman. I shouldn't have any pronunciation with uh, problems with that name. Tuskegee Airman has been very impressive for the uh, familiar connections of Cash is King, Stable, and uh, John Service. Matt, uh, a, a debut performance at uh, Parks, going seven furlongs, and then a listed stakes race at Delaware, going a mile. He looked very good coming from off the pace. There's a lot to like about this on a street sense. There is. He looked very good in both of those races, uh, as you mentioned, Brian, uh, from the barn of trainer John Service. John Service, of course, of Smarty Jones fame, um, uh, Kentucky Derby winning uh, trainer, almost Triple Crown winning trainer. Um, so uh, uh, Tuskegee Airman has not done anything wrong in his career. He will have to make the move uh, up to uh, Aqueduct, but 
uh, service frequently ships horses up to uh, uh, the Naira tracks for stakes races. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking this horse is for real, or at least for real in this field, which doesn't look all that strong as of yet. I think there are some horses who could turn out to be real great at stakes performers, but Tuskegee Airmen looks like the real deal to me. And I kind of like the race setup as he stretches out to nine furlongs. Number three, Matt, uh, prove right. This is a son of Justify, who is clearly the most experienced horse in the field. He comes off a decent race where he set the pace last time, held on reasonably well to be third in the Nashua. Yeah, for trainer James Chapman, who kind of uh, one of his trademarks is buying yearlings for really bargain bargain basement prices uh, and, and prove right as an example like of that a fifteen thousand dollar yearling purchase at the keeneland sale probably in book 35 of the sale uh, joking around of course but uh, uh chapman does really well with these these kind of horses uh, uh, fifteen thousand for proof right and he's already won way way more money than that Look good in the Nashua, going a mile, set the pace, faded to third, going longer in here. Um, not going to be easy uh, to get a win for him. Uh, yeah, he looks like a little bit more of a long shot, but I, I, I like the uh, bargain basement uh, uh, aspect of proof, right? And, and unlike Tuskegee Airman, who is a pretty high priced yearling purchase uh, for Cash is King at all. Number four, Matt, on the list is the horse that probably will be the second choice. Uh, his name is Arctic Arrogance, and Arctic Arrogance, you see there on our uh, on our uh, odds board, you see a picture of the gray there, a good-looking gray. He's a New York bred. He's run three very good races, but all against New York bred company. Yeah, I mean, I think this race, Brian, uh, sets up as a battle between a couple of New York breads with the home field, the home track advantage over horses shipping in like, uh, like Eel Miracola and Tuskegee Airmen, uh, uh, Arctic Arrogance for trainer Linda Rice um, was first in uh, his debut. Brian, sired by one of your all-time favorites. Yeah, he is a son of Frosted, isn't he? Uh, he's also a horse who who has some speed, and he's one of only a couple stakes winners in the field, with along with Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, certainly been very good in his first three races, and I can see why he will get some play in here. Arctic Air against the New York bred stakes winner. Uh, two for three, three good races, as we said. Uh, he'll be one of the horses to watch here on the front end in the Remsen and see if he can stretch his speed to nine furlongs. Another horse who might be out there on the front end is Midnight Trouble. Midnight Trouble looked good with a, uh, a resounding maiden win. Uh, I, I believe it was at Delaware Park, the son of Midnight Lude. He came back last time to face Tuskegee Airmen in that listed stakes race at Delaware, Matt. Uh, he could not hold off the rally of Tuskegee Airmen that day. Uh, but he's run a couple promising races since stretching out to a mile. Yes, certainly has Brian, and and um, just you know, and curiously, um, he will make his first start in the Remsen for trainer Peter Walder. Um, he's got a couple of works at Belmont Park uh, since moving to the barn of Peter World Walder. I don't know uh, if there's a story or what the story is with the change of. Uh, of trainer. I don't know if it's just because, you know, uh, he's going to be racing in New York and, and Walder's got a barn there. Um, but uh, whatever, uh, uh, switch of trainers for the Remsen. Yeah. We're going to show that pace projector again. Again, you can see that uh, Midnight Trouble and Arctic Arrogance, the last two horses we talked about, might have the most speed of all. Another one, though, with speed is uh, right outside them. Number six, quick to assess and quick to assess is another new york bred in fact he ran uh, against arctic arrogance going a flat mile last time over the track yeah uh, uh, and he's getting sent into this race by trainer horacio de paz a trainer that i have tons of respect for um quick to access uh 
was a big maiden special weight winner by almost 10 lengths in his second start at the recent Belmont at Big A meeting and came back, as you mentioned, to run second to uh, Arctic Arrogance. Um, you know, I, I think you got to give this horse a little bit of respect uh, running on his home track. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually turned the tables on Arctic Arrogance now, because I think of the two, he might be the one that appreciates the two-turn, nine furlong distance, just a little bit more than his New York bred competition. The last horse on the list, interestingly, is uh, pretty close to this early pace. I, I, I kind of feel like he will be the horse that's coming from a little bit farther back, maybe not as far back as Tuskegee Airmen. But W... NL is an interesting, well-bred son of good magic, Matt, who ran against very good horses in his uh, debut. And WNL uh, ran a, a nice race rallying on a sloppy, or at least a muddy track, an off track last time to get his maiden win in, in his second career start. Yeah, and, and in that race, uh, he put blinkers on for the first time. It was a race that was uh, scheduled for the turf. I don't know if Gargan had any intention of running him on the turf in there or, or, uh, and was expecting rain and expecting him, expecting the race to come off. Um, but, uh, ran a good one. Um, you mentioned the, the fourth place finish in his debut against a good field. That good field included instant coffee, who was the winner of the race, who we just saw win the Kentucky jockey club. Yeah, and the horse that ran second in that main race is Arthur's Ride, a horse I'm really looking forward to coming back at some point soon, too, another nice two-year-old. So WNL is a, uh, a an interesting horse. I, I've kind of uh, drawn to the two horses that have only had two starts in this field, Matt. I think the potential could be pretty big on both him and Tuskegee, Airman in the Remsen. All right, folks, we did the Cigar Mile, we did the Remsen. We talked about Julia shining a little bit in the Demoiselle, a nice big field in the Gopher Wand. What we're saying is Aqueduct has a really nice uh, card here on the first Saturday of December. Now it's time for our top picks, Matt. As always, I want you to go first. We're going to talk Cigar Mile first. Who is your top pick in the big one at the Big A? I am going to go with Mind Control, Brian. Uh, um maybe up for a little bit of sentimental reasons in there, but mostly because of the competitive nature of mind control. We know in the stretch, if there's a stretch duel, um, mind control often comes out on top. Zandon, on the other hand, a lot of people have question marks about that series of races without getting to the winner's circle and 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 that may just be the 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 level of competition that he has been facing but mind control's been facing good horses also i'm gonna go with with the veteran mind control i'm right there with you matt um he loves a mile he loves aqueduct and uh you know i i think he'll be part of the pace and and he'll be the horse that you have to pass in a stretch Maybe Zandon is too good and zooms right by. But on the other hand, mind control loves to win. And we don't know that about Zandon, as you certainly uh, pointed out just now. Uh, try to beat the favorite with Zandon. I, I, again, I think Zandon could have a big year in 2023, and, and I wouldn't mind seeing him win. But as a better, I think mind control is the play here in the Scar Mile. In the Remsen, Matt, we're on different horses. Uh, unfortunately, I'm on the chalk, but you aren't. Tell us why you like the New York Red Arctic Arrogance. Brian, I look at the Remsen field as as uh, as pretty wide open. It, it, it is hard to eliminate many horses in the field. Maybe just one of them. I don't give much of a chance to uh, win the race um, compared to the Cigar Mile, which I kind of see as a two-horse race. Um Basically, because it's so wide open and, and looking at the odds, I'm going to go with the local horses having a little bit of an edge. It's always uh, tricky shipping into the Big A and its racing surface. I'm going to go with the New York bread. I'm going to go with Arctic Arrogance. 
Good luck, Matt. I am not on the son of Frosted. I, as you pointed out, I love Frosted, but I, I just don't see Arctic Arrogance beating these horses at nine furlongs or likely to beat these horses at nine furlongs. I think Tuskegee Airmen is, uh, is, is, a, is a real up and comer. We're going to see something good as he stretches out to nine furlongs. Son of Street Sense out of a Mendagliadoro mare should love two turns, and I think he's looked really good so far. Uh, WNL is is the horse I would play him with there in the Rems and maybe from a little bit off the pace. I see the Cigar Mile as a race where I want to be on the lead and the Rems and not so much. That's how I handicap the pair anyway. All right, folks, that's the show for Horse Center. But before we go, let me get a parting shot from my good friend, Matt Shipman. Hey, as Brian mentioned, uh, it, it, it's a uh, really a terrific card at uh, at Aqueduct on Saturday. The Cigar Mile is the final grade one of the year in New York on the Naira circuit. And uh, Kentucky Derby hopefuls, big field in the go for one, Julia Shining. Uh, enjoy the races, everybody, this weekend. And as always, thanks for watching the show. Thank you, Matt. And thanks to our friend Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Thanks to Derby Wars, the uh, best contest site out there for their sponsorship. And of course, most of all, thank you all for watching each and every week on Horse Center. We sure do appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit that button, get subscribed to us now so you never miss another edition of Horse Center. We'll be back with another big show next week. But until then, have a great weekend. Good luck. Enjoy the big races at the Big A.